picture of Frankenstein. In 1935, horror turned to terror with the bride of Frankenstein. In 1990, the makers of Basket Case and Brain Damage bring you... Want a date? <laughs> Frankenhooker. Jeffrey Franken has a plan. I just want to bring you back. He has the ingenuity. I need female body parts. He has everything he needs, except the raw materials. Just hold still. On you! Wow! Jeffrey's creation is alive. Looking for some action? Oh, yeah! She's sexy. Want a date? You going out? I'm on my way home, but uh, thanks anyway. I... Uh... And she's sutured to please. Listen, I'm looking for a very tall, attractive woman. She's purple. She's got fresh bars on her. She's in the bar! Now, a motion picture like no other. <laughs> A tender story of love and romance. One day! A gripping tale of lust and revenge. <laughs> Frank and Hogan. Incredible. Some assembly may be required. Thank you for joining us to the latest episode of the B-Movie Club. This week we'll be discussing the 1990 horror comedy classic. It is a comedy classic. Frank and Hooker starring... Who knows? Directed by... Who cares? <laughs> Pretty standard, really. For those of you joining us for the first time, each week on the B-Movie Club, we discuss certain guilty pleasures and forgotten classics of the past. Go ahead and go to our page on Facebook, Original B-Movie Club, and give us the big thumbs up. Go to our page on YouTube, at KD9575, and hit the subscribe button. It's totally free. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at The B-Movie Club. The B-Movie Club. You get all, all of our latest updates, anytime we post a new video, anytime I find a link that's particularly B-Movie-ish, I pass it on to y'all. So don't forget to spread the word. The more the merrier, I always say. Mm -hmm. So Frank and Hooker, Aaron. What is it about? Well, let's, let's do a little backstory. This is one of these movies where, uh, after binge-watching uh, movies at the warehouse, we finally came across this. Where literally I've rented everything in the horror genre. Every, uh, what was it? P Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. I've gone through the top first level, second level, and now we're just renting things that no one's ever heard of. Let me stop you right there. Are you saying there used to be places where you'd go to rent videos? And what, what's you know, a video, let's, first of all? Hey, let's back that up. Yes. <laughs> Not beta, though. Uh, because the warehouse used to have a beta section and a VHS yeah. section. Good times. So anyway, one of my binge weekends, I came across Frank and Hooker. Which ended up being a delightful quasi-porno uh, comedy. Better than I thought. Shh, that's a pretty low standard. Okay, so what, <laughs> tell me the plot of this. All right, so place. you have, uh, it opens at a barbecue for uh, a, a lady's, what is her, birthday. father's birthday. Father's birthday, that's what it is. Uh, she's dating a young kind of inventor. He's like a doctor, but he keeps getting kicked out of medical school. He's a secret ge genius, so he's performed surgery on relatives and such, uh, and isn't he so clever? Yeah. So anyway, it, it opens that she's showing her father the fantastic gift that her boyfriend, the genius, has made, and it is like a mind-controlled uh, lawnmower. Now, let's describe her for a moment. This is clearly a thin woman in a fat suit. So it's clearly, it looks like a skinny person in one of those samurai wrestling outfits. Right. Her face is very thin. As yeah. soon as you see it, you're like, there's not something not quite right, right. here. Her neck is thin. Yeah. It just stops at the collar right. and like right here. Yeah. So anyway, it looks like um, 
like Pee Wee Herman's bicycle helmet, if you ever watch Pee Wee's Playhouse, where it's like a bicycle helmet with, with crap hanging out of it. So anyway, she said, look, Danny, look at my boyfriend painting you. It's a mind control lawnmower. You turn it on and... So she gets killed in a tragic lawnmower accident. Yeah, because, I don't know, maybe the, the fat suit cut off the uh, oxygen to her brain so she didn't know to step away from the lawnmower. It's very upsetting. I guess all that's left was, was her head. Like a, a foot, right? There's a foot. Uh, a head, a foot, there was a, a, a big toe. Right? Yeah. And a, a hand. Not much. Not much. That's all that survived the giant lawnmower accident. Which seems very weird because you're standing in front of it, so how did it only manage to chop up the middle part? It's very upsetting. So, very upsetting. so what does is, what is Frank do? He goes to therapy, seeks help from his family and friends. Yeah, and, and let me also point out, everyone including the girlfriend have some kind of uh, stylized mullet. Well, they're from Jersey. I think it's a Jersey shot. It, uh, we're Suki. Yeah. Or Snooki, or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> oh, okay. Jay Wow. Yep. Anyway, so yeah, they're all from Jersey. They all have this crazy. Uh, Joy's the I accent. It's a pseudo Italian slash Jewish right. weird strange accent. That's a good one. Um, so uh, he's you know, suffering. He's listened to a lot of you know like Springsteen and Bon Jovi. Because <laughs> that's what people do. <laughs> that's what people do in New Jersey, yeah. I assume. Uh, eat a lot of White Castle and you know try to get on. <laughs> but little little a little do, does everyone know that. Uh, Meanwhile, back in the garage, yep. there's a freezer full of uh, Kool-Aid where he's keeping his girlfriend's parts. It's like estrogen Kool-Aid yes, or something. Is. And uh, he's such a secret genius that he has figured out how to reanimate and put his girlfriend back together. But he doesn't have enough pieces to do this. So yep. what will he do? Well, apparently he made lethal crack to sell and uh, to explode prostitutes to uh, get extra parts for your uh, <laughs> disemboweled girlfriend. So he, he hooks up with a bunch of prostitutes, feeds them unwitting, I guess only one of them was supposed to take it, but they were all decided to have Well, some. first of all, after a long set of pseudo-erotic uh, measuring of thighs and checking boobs out, he, yeah. he, just, he decides there's not one perfect prostitute that he could just kill to put his girlfriend back together. That one had a, has great boobs, one has great uh, legs. So he goes to pay them because they're all angry, you know. Right. You're supposed to pay us now, and they find his giant bag of crack. Right. He he created this crack to give to the one victim he was going to choose, and the girls took it out of his hands, and they all smoked the crack because they're hookers, I guess. On the which, was very, which causes them to explode. Right. So I'm not really sure how you were going to find extra parts if, once again, the, the middle section just explodes like shrapnel. <laughs> I'm getting hot! Boom. And you see like the mannequin head flying across right. the room. High-tech special effects, to say the least. So there are just literally piles of bits and pieces of these like seven prostitutes that he... Yeah! That it. magically fit into two hefty bags. <laughs> Little did you know time. that, uh, yeah. Of course, later on, they're, they're, you've got full size legs. Good time. And they all weigh about three pounds because he's literally just picking them up like this. Yeah. So he, he drives back across the bridge, back to Joyzy. Joyzy. Uh, promptly sews his girlfriend back together, yeah. bits and pieces. And what does he do? He shocks her. He, yeah, he has a full contraption like Frankenstein, where she rises up in the platform of like, like ninety right? feet in the air, and like nobody notices right. that it's like glowing and lightning strikes the house what fifty times. This is still just a garage. By I, I would assume it would be like a, a nuclear uh, mushroom cloud. Like everyone uh, in the neighborhood should be dead from the amount of electricity running through this ninety foot pole. Clearly, so lightning strikes her, but it also strikes. Uh, the leftover parts that are resting in yeah, the, the family old the uh, cooler, yeah, the old, the old freezer. So she comes down and she's alive, but she's a little different. She's different than she used to be. She is a little different than she used to be. So now she's uh, instead of her blonde mullet, she has like a dark or a black mullet yeah. or a dark purple. Something like that. Her, fa mullet. her face is white, but she's got like her stitch mark across here. She has one African American hand, which is odd because I don't remember any African American prostitute. There was one. Was there, there one? Was one? Yeah. 
So she has like one black head. It's like all parted out. Right. And her brain is scrambled. So she's like... And she just kind of regurgitates the things that the hookers had said. Oh, Want a date? Yeah. Want a date? And if you say no, she just like crushes you. So she runs off. Does she get a cab? Or she has hitchhike? Or how does she get... I find it interesting that this is his girlfriend, but yet he dressed her like a prostitute. That's including true. giant Frankenstein clomper yeah. uh, boots. Pur she had a purple like, top. Like a purple tank top and a mini skirt and garter belt and stockings. That does seem weird. So she goes back to or back to New York. And yeah, says she did. she's looking for her pimp, so she's going back. She's literally just going up to everybody. <laughs> Want a date? So she she gets a few unwitting souls, and she just she holds them and she shocks them. Oh yeah, you can't kiss her. You can't certainly do anything else, although many try because she's so ramped up with electricity. She you she, explode. You explode. As if you've taken the crack. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything else. Because the movie is pretty spoiled to begin with. <laughs> Rotten to the core. So, this movie, the director who did this movie, uh, his biggest claim to fame prior to this was he had done the Basket Case movies. You remember those, I, I've heard of them, but I have never seen them. Basket Case is about this guy who had a partially formed Siamese twin, and at a very young age... <laughs> like Total Recall? Cut, exactly, like Total Recall. <laughs> and got it removed when he was a kid, and but it's just kind of a part of a person, and he keeps it in a basket, because he's a basket case. And whenever he kind of has a romance or something, the little crazy creature crawls out and kills the woman that he's... yeah. Good times. So that's Basket Case. So check that out. There's literally a basket in Basket Case. Uh, the actors who did this, we said there was nobody of note. Although, I guess the woman who played Frankenhooker, yeah. she was a former Penthouse pet. Yeah, uh, Penthouse uh, Pet of the Year. Oh, so there you go. Pet of the Year, 86. Nothing but the best. She had exactly four film critics. Uh, and before she wisely retired. But I will tell you, please. when she's lurching around town, uh, she does a very good job, actually. She's it's only actor. when she speaks that she loses all credibility. It's very upset. But luckily for us, she really doesn't speak that much. She wasn't in the actor's studio, I imagine. Yeah, she, yeah, she uses the method. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the movie currently has a 62% Ooh. fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. I tell you, I have no respect for Rotten Tomatoes. Because didn't they give Angel Heart like only a 78? That should have been 100% fresh. I know, and this should have been about a negative three. <laughs> this is, okay, Erin loves this movie. She finds it a comedy clock. I find it hysterical when she's walking around. Want a date? I, I found it boring. <laughs> I found it boring and stupid. I would say maybe have a couple drinks and then watch it. Well, it's like, it's like the first 45 minutes, nothing happens. The girlfriend dies five minutes into the movie. Then it's 45 minutes of him thinking, well, what am I going to do? Well, hmm, what should I do here? He does look like he's a murderer. He would have been perfect for a Christine. Literally, the Frankenhooker woman's on screen for like 15, 20. Good times, <laughs> that's what you get for all, for all that. Yeah. So I give this uh, a big thumbs down. Uh, Aaron loved it, right. she recommends it for all let's, family let's, and friends. Let's put this into perspective. Let's think of all the Frankenstein movies. There's a, Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. Are we starting from the beginning or just No, Frank we're starting movie? with whatever pops into my okay. mind first. Did you see Andy Warhol's Frankenstein? I did not see Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. Okay. If we have that on one end of the spectrum, and then we have, you know, the original Boris Karloff, Boris Karloff classic, where would this fall? I would say it falls right in the middle. I think you're insane. I can't comment on that. All right, well, suggestion. A young Frankenstein. Oh, any for <laughs> That is closer to the... Uh, Good times. Yeah, this is the original Frankenstein. I mean, I'm obviously I'm I started the B movie club because I love kind of. It doesn't sound like movie. you do. It sounds it's, like you hate cinema. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be good, but it has to be entertaining. If, if it's bad, it needs to be hilariously bad. It can't just be bad, bad. You know what I'm saying? I think you know what I'm talking about. I think you're wrong. So that's it for Frank <laughs> Next week, we're going to be staying in the horror genre. Aaron will be joining me for the next installment. We'll be doing the classic Angel Heart. I was supposed to say that. Angel Heart. Angel Heart. <laughs> Not Corey Heart. <laughs> so, Angel, Angel Heart. Heart with our good friends uh, Robert De Niro. We've got uh, Lisa Bonet. Lisa Bonet. Bonet. We've got, oh my god, his name just jumped out of my mind. 
You put a voodoo <laughs> hex on me. Mickey Rourke. Mickey, Mickey Rourke. Rourke Look at the star beautiful of the show. and vulnerable. So check that out. Let me know if any favorite scenes, favorite quotes, comments, or questions, and we may talk about it on the show. Theoretically, if we ever receive any. You need to go watch Frankenhooker and respond to Kevin and tell him that I am right. Frankenhooker is not available on Netflix, but if you want to go to Amazon.com, you can watch it streaming there, or just go to the local swap meet. I'm sure they have a few copies available. I actually found it because it was playing on Showtime or something during Halloween, so I recorded it. Oh, so there you go. I was like, Frankenhooker! <laughs> Angel Heart, however, is streaming instantly on Netflix. So it's check that do. That's where I saw it. Oh, it's so good. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to go to our page on Facebook, Original B Movie Club. Don't forget to go to our fit page on uh, YouTube. And don't forget to go follow me on Twitter at the B Movie Club. And you also have a Twitter account. I do have a Twitter account, but I can't remember what it is. It's either Snarky Sadie or Queen Erin. So uh, roll the dice on that as well. Mostly I just retweet things that are funny or I like, uh, but she like make Frank comments on my boyfriend's uh, Twitter account. She likes Frank and Hooker. <laughs> she take that funny thing with a grain of salt. <laughs> As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote, and here we are. Want a date? It's a classic. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Next week, Angel Heart. Make sure you peel an egg while you watch Angel with your long, Heart. With your long, crispy Get your lead press on nails. Thank you again for Aaron joining us. Thank you, Kevin. And be well. Live long and prosper. Mm -hmm.